I know, I'm terrifying, right? Some of you guys recognize me, some of you don't. Uh, as Russ mentioned, I did perform here like way back when this first started. And it's been a little while, um, but I decided to come back. Uh, I tell scary stories, and I hope tonight that my story will be leaving with every single one of you. <laughs> when we were young, one of our most terrifying thoughts was the physical manifestation of those creaks, those bumps, those thuds, those thumps, those little things that you hear at night when you're trying to desperately go to sleep. Now, of course, these things never manifested themselves. Most of the time, they were, you know, the fan thumping on the ceiling, the air conditioning turning on, something silly. Nothing ever came out of it. As children, of course, our imaginations always ran wild with every single scenario we could possibly think of. From monsters under the bed, to the demon in the closet, to the scary man hunched in the corner waiting to come and do whatever in our minds while we slept. Now, my, my general technique whenever I experienced these kinds of things when I was a kid was one of two things. One, which was my favorite, was to immediately jump up as fast as I could, run down the hallway, and jump in between my parents. Right there. The safety zone. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. Now, of course, as we get older, these fears go away. You know, you go to high school, you start watching more horror movies, you become desensitized to the entire monster, demon kind of thing, because everybody knows that stuff doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Of course it doesn't. I tell myself this all the time. Now, <clears throat> unfortunately, I find that even though these fears dissipate after a little while, they tend to come back after you move out of your parents' house. Not to the same degree, of course, nowhere near. I would say, honestly, they become more of a manifestation of the more realistic kind of scared stuff that we get like burglars or rapists and uh, whatever you will, people coming in and trying to knock down your door at night. And when you're sleeping, especially if you live by yourself or you're just in wherever you're living by yourself at the time without your roommate, those little bumps, while not to the same degree, will still give you that little bit of, uh, you know, that briefly skipped heartbeat that you thought that you left behind in your childhood. Now, unfortunately, Sometimes we experience something that makes us consider these moments a little bit more than other people should. I remember, I want to say a few months back. Actually, you know what? Before I get into that, a little quick background. Since I moved out of my parents, I've lived in two different apartments. The first apartment, I lived with my roommate, and that was great. And I've just recently, in the last year, moved into my own apartment and been living by myself. Now, I have a rather active imagination, to say the least. <laughs> Consequently, why I'm a storyteller. Um, but these bumps, these thumps, these scrapes, these thuds, they happen again. And they bring back a little bit of that memory, that fear that little moment where you wish that you could just suddenly run back down the hallway and in between your parents back into the safety zone, but it's not there anymore. So consequently, you have one of two choices. One is to either sit there and pull the blanket over your head like you did before when you were a kid, or you can go investigate it. I've always investigated because honestly, I prefer peace of mind more than anything else. Yeah. Now, However, I remember one particular experience that has always really lingered with me. I remember it because it has stuck with me and I still haven't quite thought of an explanation for it. One night, I remember it was, a, it was an ordinary night, one of your average kind of, you know, I wasn't doing anything, nothing was going on. I believe I was sitting at my computer, probably watching an episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia or something. 
<laughs> Green man! But I remember, of course, nature called, as it does, and I got up and I went to the bathroom. And I remember as I was doing my business, I heard a thud coming from my bedroom. And it wasn't just your average air conditioning thud. And I remember this because my air conditioning's really wonky and it makes weird noises, especially while I'm sleeping. It even just recently started going like, <laughs> like just things that, I mean, it works, but it's wonky. But this didn't sound like it came from the AC. It sounded like something had landed in my room, like something heavy, uh, silly to say it, but it sounded like a bear fell into my room. Now, I remember sitting there and thinking, you know, it's nothing. Because every single time I've investigated one of these odd sounds, they've always been the same thing. Nothing. Again, the AC turning on, the fan bumping on the ceiling, even one of my angry neighbors kicking the wall, something silly. And so I thought to myself at that point, I was like, you know what? Maybe this is a turning point. Maybe it's time for me to grow up a little bit and stop being a little bit afraid of these noises. I remember this moment distinctly because after I finished up, I did you know my usual routine, flushed the toilet, went to wash my hands, and I remember looking in the mirror and looking right at myself and saying, this is fine, there's nothing there. I know what? I'm not even gonna look. I'm not gonna investigate because I know what's gonna be there, nothing. So, I turned around, I turned off the light, and I slowly walked down the hall. And what did I do? Of course, I looked into my bedroom as I passed it. I looked deeply into the dark room, and what did I see? I saw nothing, absolutely nothing, except for the pair of eyes staring right back at me. Thank you very much, guys. And now back to your regularly scheduled programming.